this engine was brought to me as having done four to five miles um, as an engine that was supposedly rebuilt, um, but it was suffering from low oil pressure. When I put it on the test bed, it had got 18 pounds at tick over and only 10 pounds when it was revved. I didn't like to rev the engine very highly because there was an awfully nasty noise coming from the, the tappet area on the A-bank side of the cylinder head, on the, on the A-bank cylinder head. Um, <coughs> so, as a result of that, even though I'd found that the crankshaft sludge plugs were loose, in, there were 10 of them were loose out of 12, that wasn't enough to give the condition of such low oil pressure. So I then had no other option other than to strip the engine down. On stripping the engine down, um, first of all I found that two of the pistons had been put in the engine incorrectly, so that the 5A and the 2A inlet valves were colliding with the combustion chambers in the crowns of the pistons. As you can see the two mark, witness marks on the, on the valves as a result of that happening. Fortunately it hadn't damaged the pistons. Right. So then as I stripped it down further I discovered the oil pump which was as you can see is very very badly worn particularly between the two ports of the of the pump and also around the rest of the, the face in places as well. There's some scoring on the on the teeth as well of the of the pump but that's not massively bad but it's still quite bad as you can see um, <clears throat> then on further inspection of the cylinder heads i found that there were no valve stem oil seals fitted to the, the engine at all also that someone had decided to create the valve clearances by a grinding some material from the top of the valve stems and also by grinding the the tappet shims thinner than they're supposed to be to a degree of about 15 thousandths of an inch thinner than the, the thinnest standard shim is which of course obviously is not also a good idea <coughs> as you can see that particular tappet was not revolving correctly and the size of chatter marks on top of the, on top of that um, that tappet, which I suspect is probably as a result of the fact that the the valve was just starting to touch the piston and was creating causing a condition whereby there was bounce on this tappet that was making these marks as it was coming up and hitting on the camshaft. Um, the other thing that I found with it was that supposedly it was a reconditioned engine. And as you can see, a reconditioned engine doesn't have crankshaft dampers that have got wear grooves like that in it. Apart from the fact, apart from the fact that that is absolutely solid because of the age, the age of the material. Um, and the other thing that I found is that the sprockets, the top sprockets, were also in a really bad condition. I suspect somebody had dropped them or something of that nature because as you can see some of the, the, the tips of the teeth are actually missing or the edges of them are missing. So of course they'd also have to be. With the big end, end bearing shells from the number one B bank Conrod. Um, as you can see something had gone through that bearing that was not supposed to be there. Um, and it's caused a, a groove through into the copper lining of the bearing. Fortunately, because the crankshafts on these engines are nitride hardened and are really hard, something like that, you can be lucky and, and be able to polish out the mark on the crankshaft such that all you then need to do is to replace the bearings, mm. which is what I've done on this engine. So hopefully, it, I'm pretty confident that it will be okay. Um, and of course, it saved the customer the, the added cost of and um, re-grinding the crankshaft. So as I said before, it really is a case of buyer beware and a reconditioned engine can say it's a reconditioned engine but sometimes they're not.